Hi everyone, Linda Heldman here for Canadian Beats. Today I have on the phone with me Serena Ryder. Welcome, Serena. Thanks for having me. You are a multi-platinum award winner. You create some of the most memorable music and and you're all over the place. <laughs> All She's all over the place. You you have definitely been a busy lady in in the past several months. Um, yeah, absolutely. You you were at the Junos. You've been at the MMVAs. Uh, you've been to the Formula One Grand Prix, and right. you were in Ottawa for the big Canada 150 party. Right. And yeah. among all that. You've released your latest album, Utopia. Congrat yeah. Congratulations on that. <laughs> it's a great Thank album. You so much. Thank you. So before we talk a bit about the album, I would like to ask, what was it like to perform in Ottawa on Canada Day? Well, it was it was pretty intense. Like it was, um, you know, there was there was a part of me that was so excited. Um, and so, so pumped to be there to celebrate being Canadian and with all of the people that were there and all of the amazing artists and, you know, like Justin and Sophie hosting and there was, you know, all these amazing musicians. And then there was also a part of me that was um, just not quite sure how I felt about being there um, when it came to, you know, Indigenous issues and, 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 and celebrating um, you know, confederation almost in that way. Mm -hmm. So it was like, it was kind of, um, it was like a back and forth kind of feeling when I was there. Um, but for the, for the most part, it ended up being like a gigantic celebration and it, there was so much love and there was so much celebration of, of art and, and culture and music and everybody had a, a wonderful time. So it was really beautiful. Mm hmm Mm-hmm. Well, I only got to see it from TV. My son was apparently there briefly, uh, so I don't okay. know how much. Yeah, I don't know how much he got to saw see. He uh, he said that security was pretty tight, and I'm thankful for that because my whole time I was watching TV, I'm there going, I hope there's no issues, security issues going right. on. So right. it yeah, was security was definitely super tight. It was like there was nobody getting backstage unless they'd been fingerprinted. Like, mm -hmm. It was full on. And then also, I felt bad though because there was like a six-hour wait for people to get in and in line. <laughs> it was so crazy. Uh, that's great, though. Yeah, what a, yeah. what an opportunity. And yeah, it was I, beautiful. I had mentioned when we got started the Formula One Grand Prix in Montreal, you got to sing the national anthem for that. I did, yeah. It was crazy like we we were brought in the day before for a sound check and we were we, we drove us around the entire track wow so cool and um just the day of like the magic of it was phenomenal just like you could feel the energy was palpable everyone was so excited and all the drivers and all the like dudes fixing the cars like super super fast and i have a funny story about it actually which is hilarious so i was um being led out to sing the national anthem and then last minute they said okay well we're gonna have a minute of silence um before the before the national anthem so we're going to introduce you um and have a minute of silence and there was all these vets behind me holding the flag and and they said okay so we're going to count you in and when we count you in we're going to go five four three two one and point at you to start singing like, okay so i walk out they introduce me, and then I hear over the speakers in French, they say, there's a minute of silence that's going to happen now. Um, but one of the guys started doing the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and pointed at me to start singing, and I was so confused because they just said, it's a minute of silence. Mm -hmm. And I was like, now? Like, I was asking, now, sing now, sing now, sing now, just pointing at me, it's live TV, right? And so I start singing. Oh, Canada, where is it? And in my ears, I have, like, in-ears in, right? Mm -hmm. In-ears, and I can hear the people inside the building saying to me, Abort! Abort! Stop! This is the moment of silence! Abort! Abort! Oh, so no. Thinking, and, and I just stopped. 
and I'm like, oh my god. I just sang through the, the minute of silence, and the, the dude told me to do it, and, he, and I look up at him, and he's like mouthing, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry to oh, me. Oh, no. And I was like, dude, this is like, this is the worst. It's going to be on YouTube and like, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, and then I just stop and I put my head down and I like wait for the other, what it was, 45 seconds of the minute of silence and he counts me in to sing again. So I sing again and then I get off thinking, oh, I just really screwed that up. Like, that's so terrible. Like, what a huge opportunity. There's like, you know, millions and millions of people watching. I get off and then I was like, was that live on TV? And they were like, no, they, they didn't have your sound on. <laughs> so, oh, they didn't thank have the goodness. On me. So, until I actually get supposed to sing it. So, anyway, that's my story. I thought I screwed it up, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good story. That's a really good imagine? story. Oh, my goodness. Yes. It's yeah. like, go ahead, sing. It's like, no, don't sing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, major embarrassing moment, but. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, gee, gee, crazy, <laughs> crazy. Thanks for sharing that. That's awesome. Yeah, no problem. (laughs) So on May 26th, you released your latest album, Utopia, and it debuted on the charts at number one. That's, how does that happen? That is like. I I have no idea. Like that's never happened to me with any, any, any record, anything in my whole career. It was a career first. That. Um, So, yeah, it's, it's, um. People like my album. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. for it. Yeah. I th- I think there's only a handful of artists that could say that they debuted at number one. That's just phenomenal. It's great. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm very very proud. Now, what was the inspiration behind this album and picking the title Utopia? Um, well, the inspiration came after um, I I wrote a whole bunch of songs. And I noticed that there was a theme that was in my songs um, about balance, about just um, finding finding some sort of balance in my life, which is something that I've always been intrigued with. And, and I think that's something everybody is always looking for, right? To have, to find some sort of, some of the peace of balance in your life. And um, that theme started coming out and for me, finding, finding that middle ground is my utopia. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so for I was reading a book one day and I saw the word utopia, um, and there was a definition of utopia in this book, and it said um, the Greek meaning of utopia is good, not place, which is hilarious to me. It's like a good place that doesn't exist necessarily, it's whatever you make of it. So I thought, well, what if I wrote an album that was my utopia? I could, I could make this you know, imaginary world in a record because that's the beauty of art, is creating your your own space or, or whatever world you want to live in because it's so um, ethereal and something that you can't quite grasp. Um, but the beauty of, of making music and, and recording and, and writing and being able to perform is that you create that reality. It becomes something that's real after a while. So my goal in this record because I knew I was going to be performing it and touring for hopefully forever, you know, the songs. Um, I wanted to create something that, that made me feel a sense of balance. And, um, you know, there's there's quite the roller coaster ride on the record of, of different styles of songs and different, you know, there's really dark songs, there's really light songs. And um, I wanted to create an album that was a journey, you know. So that's that's kind of how it all came about. Cool, cool. I, I noticed that as, as I listened through it several times, and it's like, yes, you've got these really deep songs, and, and I won't say depressing, but as you say, on the darker side, and then there's other ones yeah. where it's like, oh, yeah, get up, party, dance, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and so it's definitely, and apparently you wrote like a hundred songs for this album. Yeah. And, and, yeah, and, and at one point you were thinking of making it a, a, a trilogy album. Yeah, I wanted I wanted to make like a triple album because I, I was it was really hard to uh, you know it's like when you write songs you're writing music it's like you're putting your heart and soul into it it was really hard to 
to um, just put 17 songs out there, you know? Exactly. Um, out of all of them. Um, but the process of chipping away and getting them down, it was, it, was, it was really amazing, actually, for me, because I was able to um, really condense and... It was almost like an editing process of like when you write a book or you're, you're creating a movie, those kind of things. It was the editing process is, is always the most important process, right? Because we want the songs that are the most poignant and the ones that that say the most in them. And um, also the ones that you're going to perform and show good performing. So a lot of, a lot of how are we whittled it down with, uh, you know, a lot of rehearsals with my band and a lot of... Um, just playing them live and seeing how it felt on stage because for me it's you know if you make an album and you can't perform it properly like what's the point of doing it you know? mm-hmm. 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 yeah and and you were able to showcase this album in in some really unusual ways uh i have to talk about the quietest concert ever on the ocean floor that oh my gosh that's incredible. Yeah. I mean, you you perform songs showcasing some of the music that's on Utopia. Uh, yeah. Tell us a bit about how that even came to be and what made you feel it was the right time to showcase some of this music. Right. Well, it was actually uh, something that CBC and Parks Canada came to me about. And, um, you know, they wanted to... Really, they, they wanted to, to get people back out into the woods and see how important it is um, to get back to nature. And that's something that's, that's really, really important to me, too. So it was, was not only like an opportunity to perform in a beautiful, beautiful place, but it was an opportunity to partner with CBC and Parks Canada for that kind of awareness, which is amazing. And, I mean, who wouldn't say yes to performing on the ocean floor? Oh. You know, like it was, it was one of the most brilliant, beautiful experiences I've ever had in my life. Like I was, I was canoeing, like I was kayaking, you know, Mm -hmm. right where my stage was, Mm -hmm. you know, five hours later, I was performing there. That, that's just mind blowing. (laughs) Like, yeah, like 60 feet of water. You know, was just gone and there was a stage and I was performing. It was. It's magical. Watching watching that video, which is you can watch on YouTube. Uh, I, I highly recommend people to give it a, a watch if they haven't seen it already because it's really incredible. Yeah, it was so magical. And like, you know, they call it the quietest concert ever. It's like we weren't creating any sort of sound. Like we weren't, you know, everything that we brought in, we took back out with us. We mm-hmm. weren't leaving anything behind. And even, you know, the sound, it's like everyone had um, wireless headphones Mm -hmm. to listen to the the show. Basically, if they were to take off their headphones, they would only hear the drums. There was no, you know, speakers, no amplification. It was amazing. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. Um, I have so many more questions, but I know we've got a time limit here. You're gearing up for a coast-to-coast Canadian tour this fall. Can you share right. any details on that? Um, well, we have, we're going to basically be jumping on the tour bus and touring across the entire country. So um, we have a bunch of the shows booked already, not all of them booked. So I, I don't really think that I'm able to say exactly where I'm when we're playing but um it's going to be in the late fall Mm -hmm. um and if you haven't seen us play in your city yet we will be in your city so awesome awesome well i i am in the wilds of sudbury and you actually are here on august the 19th and i'm not here that weekend no so I'm really hoping wherever this fall tour takes you, you are oh, yeah. in we'll a have, reasonable. We'll have to go back to Sudbury because I love Sudbury too. I've, I've had so much fun out there so many times. So, yeah. Awesome, awesome. I was so disappointed when I found out that you first. Well, I was excited that you were coming, and I was disappointed that oh my goodness, I'm away that weekend. So uh, oh, so hopefully, hopefully we can connect somewhere in this yeah, this fall. Absolutely. Yeah. 
I'll yeah. be around. I'm not going to stop touring probably for the next two or three years, so I'll be back. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> I'm afraid we've run out of time, but I seriously have so many other questions I would love to ask you. And if we can connect in the fall, maybe I'll get my chance to ask them. Serena, thank you so much for awesome. talking with me today. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Oh, my we, pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, Linda. Thanks. We've been chatting with Serena Ryder, and I'm Linda Heldman for Canadian Beats.